Good day and welcome back to the Super Data Science YouTube channel. We again have a Tableau episode for you today. We will be looking at creating mini charts or as you can call it a panel chart. Now firstly let's have a quick look. We've built the profit dashboard before so you can either use the one if you followed along and if you haven't do check out the video it's a really great material on how to create a proper dashboard like this but um, if you do not have it then you can get a copy from the link below. All right, let's see what we've been asked to do. Now, our stakeholders had said this is a very nice dashboard, but what they want to see or want to be able to do is to compare the top 30 manufacturers like we've got over here with the sum of sales over the period of the, the, the for that we've got for the data. So what we'll do, and it's quite a quick and simple visualization that we'll be doing, is simply by taking the sum of sales or taking the sales measure Having placed that on the rows, we can take our manufacturers and put them onto the rows as well, perhaps. And next, we'll take our order date and make that the continuous quarter date. All right. Now, a few things happen. As you can see, uh, our filters from our dashboard got populated here, which I'll remove because we don't want to see that. And we're looking at all of the manufacturers right now. So if I move this by holding down the control button, if I move that to filter, select all and simply, I don't think this should be news to you, but simply selecting the top 30 by sales, we would only have 30 of our manufacturers here. Now, as you can see, it's a nice chart. We can even change it to an area chart. It's a nice chart. However, it's very difficult to compare each of the manufacturers against each other. Even if I do move it to column, it's still quite difficult to compare it to each other. So that's where we want to look at those mini charts um, placed nicely into a grid. Okay, so how do we go about that? Firstly, I'm going to remove manufacturer, so we'll go back to that view and we create a parameter. So we can call this parameter the number of columns and we'll make that an integer because we want to be able to allow the user with this parameter, which acts like a variable by the way, to be able to choose the number of columns. I'll set the value at 5, the current value at 5, which is an integer. And we'll just say the minimum they can choose is 2, maximum 10, and it needs to be a step of 1. Now, that parameter, if I do go and make it available for the user, allows the user to change the number of columns shown. So that's quite helpful if you have more values that you want to show later on or want to give the user that uh, dynamic capability. All right, so how do we basically then connect this and start creating our, our chart? or our mini charts. So firstly, we need to define columns and then rows at the same time. So we need to create two more calculated, well, two calculated fields, two more steps for this, and it's really straightforward. Firstly, we'll look at the column index. All right, so how do we do the column index? Now, the calculation does look very daunting when we create it, but we'll go through it step by step and recap as we go along. So firstly, we'll have an IF statement. So what we'll do is we need to look for a specific condition. And we're going to use the table calculation index. Now, if you're not familiar with what index does, so the table calculation index gives you the number of the current row in the partition. So we've got the top 30 manufacturers, so that basically will be replaced by the position in the list of that specific manufacturer. Now, if we take that index and we use the modulus function, now again, to recap a little bit more, um, the modulus function is basically uh, like, a, like division where you only end up with the remainder. So for instance, if I just look at our calculator quickly, if we take eight, mod oh, sorry, eight divided by five, we'll end up with 1.6 obviously, but if I took eight mod five, eight goes into five, two, sorry, one time, and we end up with the remainder of three. So what we'll basically say here is we want to um, take the index, use the modulus operator to get the remainder now and we'll just close the bracket that's our condition if our condition is not equal to zero which means there is a remainder then it's straightforward as saying we want to have that remainder so we'll just copy it from there I'll just undo that we'll just copy that from there and that is our remainder that we want to show. And the reason why we do that is we know that every time it will, the remainder will restart um, at the lowest value and run up to the actual number of columns. Right, so when the index, so this is now the, the um, else part, so if the index is, um, well, mod, the index mod the number of columns is actually um, not equal to zero, then we simply use, or well, that is actually 
um, is equal to zero, which means it's a full number, and it's actually reached the end, the number of columns, then we literally just put number of columns down. So we know that will end up in the fifth column. So to recap, what this does is it basically gives us a running number of columns one through to five using the modulus operator, and it will be restarting for every next row. So that's our column index, and I'll just hit apply. If I can just show you what has been done. Oh, firstly, uh, remember to go and change this to a discrete. Uh, we don't want a continuous measure because we're not going to do any calculations on there. But if you move the column index now in there, you can see we've created that effect. And also if I just move manufacturer into detail, you can see there's multiple of them stacked on top of each other. Let me just undo that. And um, if I move it with control into detail, then we obviously keep the filter. Um, and you can see multiple of them stacked on top of each other. But we use the index function, and we know the index function needs to be you know, well inside there. And we, the index function needs to be created by the manufacturer or calculated by the manufacturer. So we'll just select it there. And you can see now we've got five of them stacked on top of each other. Next step is to get them into rows. And that's, again, not a very difficult calculation. Uh, we can just duplicate our column index. We'll rename it as we can just reuse most of what we've already done. It's not exactly the same, so do be careful. All right, so our row index, if we go and edit that. Firstly, um, the condition will stay the same. We'll say if that mod, the number of columns, is not a full number, um, or uh, is not zero, so in other words, if it's a... Um, if it's a full number, then we are saying in essence that we want to use a different operator. Now, I don't know if you remember the integer um, division, but in essence, we'll be saying rather than using the mod like we have previously, is to use the integer division. And um, what integer division does basically, it only it throws away the remainder and only leaves you the integer or the whole part. So, div, and we'll say index like we had before. And the second part of the function is the number of columns. And we'll just add on one because we know, and I just want to make sure it's the bracket is closed off. Yeah, just after the bracket. And because we know um, for the first five, so one to five, one divided by five gives us zero with the remainder. And so the first row would be zero, but we know we actually start off counting from one. So I'm just adding a one on there. And then for the next one, and um, if it's not in the first uh, first row or first line, then we can basically use just the div function. Now let me just undo that. Use the div function, and we can replace the number of columns. And we don't have to add one here, so we can just say div the index. All right. So next, we will move the row index into rows. It would now be staggering across because remember, we need to make sure that we compute actually using the manufacturer. And there are our mini charts. How helpful is that? We can also just put our manufacturer name into the label and just uh, make sure it's always displayed. Uh, what we also do, we'll just hide the actual labels or the headers for these row indexes because that's not necessarily and we have a bit more space. And this way we can easily see which ones are our manufacturers with the most sales contributing to our bottom line and um, yeah so over time we can easily see also uh, if there's any seasonal activity so you can see whether there's specific spikes or if there's an increase or decrease in, well a general increase or decrease in the sales value as well i hope you enjoyed this and i hope that you will be able to try this on your own do stay tuned we've got some excellent further tutorials on tableau coming up i hope to see you soon until next time